Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about mitochondrial dysfunction, mutation, and Peyronie's disease, or any fibrotic disorder for that matter. A lot of different diseases have been, looking, have been looked at as mitochondrial disorders uh, in recent years, uh, including Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's, ALS, a bunch of uh, neurological conditions, and even cancer, and even autism, which is now, uh, I guess the evidence is mounting that even autism is a mitochondrial disorder. Now, uh, fibrosis is no exception, and Peyronie's is no exception. Uh, pulmonary fibrosis in the last two decades has been looked at from uh, that lens as a mitochondrial disorder, and just last year it was shown in one study that 90% of men with Dupuytren's contracture, that is scarring of the hand, had heteroplasmic mutations of their mitochondria. Now, we've also known um, from studies in the past that men with Peyronie's have some kind of mitochondrial problems, and inside the actual plaque or scar of Peyronie's is an abundance of mutated or dysfunctioning mitochondria. Now, how does this situation arise? Well, it turns out that when you give mitochondria too much glucose, it ends up mutating over time. And this is because a mitochondria can use two fuel sources. They can use glucose or they can use ketones. And um, when they use glucose, they actually end up creating ROS as a byproduct. ROS is reactive oxygen species. Reactive oxygen species have been known to cause Peyronie's disease or be a factor in Peyronie's disease. That's why we have a lot of antioxidants to, to get rid of those reactive oxygen species. Uh, but what's creating that ROS is you or the modern human fueling their mitochondria with glucose. And what that does is it fragments, uh, glucose itself or having too much glucose fragments your mitochondria, causes mutations because of this ROS. And then you have an abundance of mutated mitochondria in your body. Now, interestingly, um, when, when mitochondria use ketones, they don't produce this ROS. And this is very important. So, uh, you know, for, for Parkinson's disease, they've been getting Parkinson's patients uh, or uh, victims, if you will, uh, on a ketogenic diet, which is a diet high in fat, low in carbohydrates, and it will take somebody who can barely walk or function, and then suddenly they can kind of walk around and talk and have a normal day almost. So it's a huge, huge deal. Um, the ketogenic diet is being looked at to treat all the diseases I mentioned, ALS, Alzheimer's, and um, even autism. Uh, the ketogenic diet has shown promise in autism, uh, not just on rats, but on humans. And... Um, this is because the ketones themselves, when you eat fat, your body converts that into a ketone, and then your body gives, your mitochondria use that ketone to create ATP instead of glucose. And researchers like to say that glucose is essentially like coal for your mitochondria, whereas ketones is more like a, a clean energy source. So ketones are the cleaner energy source for the mitochondria. And what happens when you, when you put um, somebody on a ketogenic diet is what's called heteroplasmic shifting. And that means that on a ketogenic diet, your body actually reduces the number of mutated mitochondria in your body and also increases the amount of mitochondria you have in your body. So you have more mitochondria and healthier mitochondria in your body. So right there, you have the very cause of fibrosis that is mutated mitochondria out of the picture simply by avoiding carbohydrates, which is very profound, right? That's really interesting. So, um, you know, I, I, and another thing to mention is that... Uh, you probably know that two, the two main supplements we take for Peyronie's is acetyl L-carnitine and CoQ10. Well, both of those are uh, the most popular supplements for mitochondrial disorders. So that's a clue right there. Now, I've taken both of those on and off for years, and I've suffered some pretty bad side effects when getting off them, like really scary side effects. And uh, I don't want to scare you away from those supplements. I think they could be really helpful, um, though I... I probably won't be taking them again because, you know, why, why take supplements when you could just cut out the glucose and get rid of your mutated mitochondria right there? So I highly recommend you look into the ketogenic diet um, for your mitochondria, but also to keep your blood sugar down, as I mentioned before, because high blood sugar equals high insulin and high blood sugar equals higher TGF beta, more scarring. But now we have a deeper you know, a, a more important reason to do this and avoid glucose, which is our mitochondria. If you don't want to do the ketogenic diet for very long, or for some reason you're, you're just struggling with it, you could do intermittent fasting. 
Um, you know, modern, modern humans eat way too often. Um, you know, a long time ago, humans would be in ketosis the majority of their lives. Um, you know, a lot of people like to argue about whether or not humans ate, early humans ate meat or not. That's not important. The point is that early humans were in ketosis in the, the majority of their lives. So everybody should be in ketosis when they're sleeping. Ketosis is when your body is using ketones. Your liver is producing ketones. You're using fast stores instead of burning glucose. Um, and everybody gets into ketosis while sleeping, but people who are uh, have high blood sugar tend to have a problem getting into that. Uh, and they, they get really hungry. They get hypoglycemic. Their blood sugar feels low and they want to eat. They want to eat because their body's not producing ketones. So, uh, you know, uh, we already know that most people with Peyronie's and Dupuytren's have high blood sugar already. They have diabetes. So if you think about it, um, you know, I think it was just last year, there was another study showing that young men with Peyronie's tended to have higher blood sugar in non-diabetics. So we've known for a while that diabetics tend to have Peyronie's and Dupuytren's, but now we know that simply young men with a little bit higher blood sugar than other men tend to have Peyronie's. So this is a huge deal because if you have high blood sugar, that's hypoglycemia, that's too much glucose fragmenting and mutating your mitochondria, and that's causing the ROS right there. So I, I don't think I have too much more to say on this topic, but I do wanna say that I think this is incredibly important. And the very fact that a lot of, or the majority of modern diseases, cancer, heart disease, and all this neurological stuff can be traced to your mitochondria says a lot, and especially with fibrotic disorders. So, uh, you know, I, I know I've said it I've said it before that you should be on a low insulin inducing, low carb diet to fight this disease, but now I cannot recommend it uh, any more than than now. Uh, so definitely try it out and do some research yourself. I think you'll find the results are pretty shocking and. Uh, I hope to uh, make more videos on this in the future. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll talk to you soon.